Hi, I'm Rob, and I'm excited to talk to you about a um, self-driving car that I built and about reinforcement learning. For those of you who don't know what reinforcement learning is, don't worry, I'm going to try to give you a, a crash course in, in this 10 minutes. And for those of you who do, I hope I inspire you to try to build your own self-driving car using um, this AI technique. So a bit about me, I'm an engineer. Uh, I'm interested in things like aviation, engineering, and computer science. Um, if you're interested, there's a bit uh, on my social links if you want to reach out. Uh, I co-host the Coding Night at TOG, where we look at um, interesting projects uh, each one of us is working on. And um, uh, we're currently doing that on Discord, so uh, feel free to check that out. And um, I look forward to talking to you there. Um, so artificial intelligence is a huge category of different types of expert systems and I was very intimidated by this. So uh, what I, after a bit of uh, research, I kind of stumbled across machine learning and even that was very broad. Uh, but it had cool things in it like uh, image and text classification, is it a dog, is it a cat, um, all the way to, uh, to you know, um, actual face recognition. Um, and then to this uh, other section called reinforcement learning, uh, where you know your uh, software, uh, your artificial intelligence is um, maneuvering this environment that you've created, and uh, it's getting a, a reward, either negative or positive, uh, and it's trying to reduce its negative rewards and maximize its uh, its positive rewards. Very interesting uh, because you can uh, build a AI to you know play video games. Um, which I, I was highly interested in, but there are other applications like, you know, financial uh, trading. Uh, you and me could build a, um, a artificial intelligence trader and the environment it lives in is uh, the stock market and, uh, you know, its actions it performs buying and selling on the stock market and, you know, it's trying to maximize uh, profits. Yeah. In terms of robotic navigation, it could be a robotic arm trying to navigate through, uh, say, a bush to pick fruit. So there are all different types of uh, applications for this, which is why I think I'm highly interested in it and why the artificial intelligence community is, is very interested in it. Um, some notables about it, uh, this uh, technique was used to beat players at like uh, pro players at Dota 2 and uh, defeating GOAT champions. So that's your Google DeepMind and all that. Um, so what do you need in order to build a uh, you know, a reinforcement learning, uh, reinforcement learning um, agent. Well, there are many tools uh, and I'll try to keep this very high level, but please feel free to um, ask any questions in the comments. Um, the main thing you should know is that uh, you need to structure your uh, problem in the form of a Markov decision-making process. And all that means is that you need to make sure you have an environment that outputs some information have an agent within that environment receiving that information and let the agent perform actions on the environment, change the environment based on those actions and get some uh, reward, whether it's negative or positive, and allow the agent to update its strategy for the next, uh, the next iteration uh, where it will perform more actions and so on and so forth. Um, you'll store these in arrays, uh, you'll measure things by time, you'll use a bit of probability, and in all of that, you need to uh, make sure that your uh, AI environment is broken up into episodes where there'll be a start and an end, and when you get to the end, we go back to the start, and the uh, agent is allowed to perform several different actions within that environment um, you know, per episode. So... Uh, you also need to either have a, a simulation of the environment or you can use real world applications like me and you we could build a, a real uh, self-driving car and we could try drive it on the roads but uh, when you build ai it's not very clever to begin with so it needs some um, opportunity to learn and you know you don't want an ai driving on a real street uh, and trying to figure out whether it's a good idea to drive on paths or not i definitely don't want to be a pedestrian in that scenario um, but there are things like, you know, there's uh, football robots uh, that are doing this. Um, I can assume some rovers on Mars are doing that. 
Um, so there are real world applications, but simulations are better because you can run thousands and thousands of them very quickly and the AI can learn. And then you take the AI model or the brain from that in simulation and bring it into the real world. Uh, so it doesn't need all that time to train. When you have all of this set up, you now need some sort of goal and you need to borrow some uh, maths from our friends in finance and use discount cash flow to find out what the present value of our future rewards are. When you have that, you start creating this thing called a policy and it uses what's called the Bellman efficiency equation, but I won't get into the maths part of it. It's essentially finding, trying to find out what is the quality of, uh, of the action our agent is going to take. And uh, when it determines that, it places it in a table called a Q table, a Q for quality, thus uh, why it's called a Q learning. Um, and in order for it to find out what's the right uh, Q value to put into that table, it needs to do a thing called um, it needs to do a thing called uh, ex uh, exploration versus exploitation. So if there is a uh, five gold coins in a room and we know that, uh, we can exploit that fact and constantly collect uh, five coins per episode. But we will miss out on an opportunity that could be down the corridor where there's big massive treasure chest. So if we're 100% exploitation, we will forget about that corridor and we will just collect those gold coins. But if we have 100% exploration, we'll go down that corridor and we may or may not find a treasure chest. So uh, there are different formulas uh, to calculate this, but uh, just be mindful that it is something your agent will do. It will explore its environment and exploit some known things about it. Okay, so you've got this uh, amazing uh, AI set up, but it will only be so good as the amount of uh, um, Q values it has and the amount of actions it can perform. But what if you have a very complex environment? Um, maybe it's based off image systems or you have, you know, millions of different actions you can perform. Uh, so uh, current uh, reinforcement learning won't be good for that. So what we need to do is start tapping into um, neural networks and uh, deep neural networks. And that's essentially a, a fancy way of saying a computer that replicates the neurons in a brain and we feed it inputs, it will change the strength of each neuron uh, to give an output. And our AI agent will try and predict what action is best for it to take. That's very interesting uh, because you can do really cool things, which is called experience replay where our artificial intelligent agent will essentially uh, daydream. Uh, it will take information from uh, past experiences and it will try to replay them uh, to try update its values to uh, before it goes and carries out an action. <coughs> so when you have all of this set up, uh, I coded in Python. Uh, I use PyTorch. There's uh, TensorFlow and other um, uh, machine learning uh, um, libraries you can get. I use Anaconda, it's just a platform with all different tools, uh, Spider, which is an IDE, which is one of them. So with all these tools, you can build something that looks like this. This is my car and this is my environment. Uh, you know, it's very simplistic, but that's the point. It's more about the uh, algorithm we're trying to train here than it is the, um, you know, the fancy graphics. But what's really interesting is the car will go from top to bottom. And when it gets to the bottom, it will flip and it will go back to the top again. And when it starts, it starts at zero and it's trying to get a reward of one. Uh, and it does this by reaching the bottom. That's its goal. Every time it moves towards its goal, it will get a 0 0.01 uh, reward. And every time it moves away, it will get a negative uh, 0 0.02. And if uh, it touches any of the edges of the road, which is symbolized by this yellow sand, it will get a negative reward. So it will try to avoid that. <coughs> now this little ants looking character here is my car. <laughs> Obviously it looks nothing like this, but uh, the sensors here on the front will read in information about the environment, uh, which is black here. It'll get a uh, zero. Uh, and if it hits the sand, it will get a minus one. And if it hits the end, it'll get a plus one. Okay, great. So let me show you this now, and there are some links down there to YouTube videos if you want to check it out. Um, this is my AI agent, my self-driving car. And you can see at the moment it's moving uh, like an ant. I said this before, and um, this is just sped up because, um, you know, I, I, it's a simulation and, and I want to see actions very quickly. 
its objective is to go from the top of the screen down to the bottom in the most efficient way uh, it thinks is possible. Um, however, if I start to um, put in uh, different roads uh, here or obstacles, it will try its best to, um, to avoid these. And as you can see, it now navigated around to get there. Um, sometimes it will try to take a risk and drive across the road, but what we can do is penalize it by giving it more of a negative reward. So it will try to avoid that. Um, we can do uh, other stuff um, like uh, those uh, experience replays I told you about. So we've just ever we've only ever shown it um, uh, straight lines, but if we start adding circles in here, it will uh, it will try to learn how to avoid them. And as you can see, it navigated around us. Um, now. So it's playing different episodes and it's performing actions and it's getting rewards. So we can actually graph that and have a look. And as you can see, when it started off, it was doing very bad. And as it started to um, to do more and more episodes or more and more attempts, it uh, started to get better until we started introducing obstacles and then it started to get bad again. But what's interesting here is that uh, we can actually um, give it different types of obstacles and it will learn to get around them. As you can see, it's doing it there. Um, As you can see, it's now gone back up again. So that's my driver uh, list car. Um, all the code is available uh, at my GitHub. Uh, there's a Udemy um, AI course you can take where you can learn about this more in depth. Um, and there's some links here to other people who have done it before. Um, just a bit of my two cents on the industry. Uh, Will we ever have self-driving cars, um, you know, uh, fully autonomous? Um, my assumption is uh, no. And the reason for this, I don't think it's to do with the technology. Um, I actually think it's to do with more uh, regulation and litigation. Uh, for example, I don't think uh, Elon Musk would be too happy if every single car accident that happens in the world, if everybody drove a Tesla, uh, if he has to pay for those, uh, those accidents. Um, so I think some regulation needs to be uh, needs to be addressed. There are different levels of um, there are different levels of automation, and level five being fully autonomous. Uh, level zero is no autonomy. That's just you and me driving. And level one is driver assist. I think that's kind of where the industry is going, which they're just making driver assist uh, AI. In the future, I don't think it'll ever really go full autonomous. What I think will happen is we'll um, pay somebody like Netflix or Amazon, uh, you know, 10 euros per month or whatever, and somebody in a cubicle somewhere uh, will essentially drive our car for us. Uh, I'm thinking Total Recall, um, Johnny Cabs. Uh, Google that if you don't know what that is. Um, so that's pretty much uh, where I can go next with this. I could start uh, building a 3D environment, maybe use GTA. Um, I could put a physical wheel there and watch it turn, uh, activating the servos on it uh, while it tries to navigate a virtual car. I can take some of my dashboard camera and try uh, um, perform actions based on real world data that I have. Um, I can leave cars out of it altogether and start focus on uh, recognizing people if I wanted to. Where I am actually uh, moving towards is actually uh, learning to uh, get my AI agent to learn to play Doom. And that's using a thing called convolutional neural networks, which is a whole different topic altogether. Um, but that's it. Thanks very much. And I look forward to your comments.